Um, so we talked about this, uh, some examples of, of abrupt changes um, that are already happening. We, uh, Wayne talked about decreasing Arctic sea ice. There's increasing extinctions. Uh, areas that need more research already talked about this, the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. Um, and um, interestingly, you know, it's, science is always constantly looking at these issues and then reevaluating what's a threat and what's not a threat. Uh, if I had talked to you five years ago, we would have talked a lot about uh, meridional ocean circulation, the North Atlantic deep water, and how if that shut down rapidly, that could cause an abrupt change. Uh, the models now today agree quite well that the odds of that happening in the coming century are very, very low, that this is a system that doesn't, will not just collapse on us in, in the coming century. So what used to be an abrupt threat has now been pushed down the radar a little bit because we studied it, because we understand more. Another interesting one, and I get asked this a lot, is so we, there's, we talk about this in, in this room. There's as much carbon in permafrost as there is in all coal, oil, and natural gas, and that stuff's melting, and that carbon will come out into the atmosphere. And there's been a lot of interest as whether or not that will happen abruptly. Will you see a very rapid increase in CO2 and a rapid increase in methane as these permafrost soils melt. And as we've studied them, particularly over the last four or five years, we've, be, we've come to recognize that there are thermodynamic constraints on how rapidly you can make this stuff go away. So whereas methane and CO2 is going to increase from melting of permafrost, that's going to happen. It's not going to happen abruptly. And so that's the, there's some good messages lurking in here and to, in, inside the bat as well. 